So let me consider a circle and a line and see how different cases arise as seen in the previous session. So considering a line and a circle initially to start with the case one where I have a circle with a suitable radius and then I have a line which does not intersect. So this is the line L and this is the circle which I denote with this. So for a circle and line here the possibility is that the line does not intersect the circle. Now the second case is where I have a circle and a line which cuts the circle. So here the line cuts the circle, here the line does not cut the circle or does not pass through the circle. And the third possibility is that a line touches the circle is how we study the three different cases. In this case, the line touches the circle. So here we have three possibilities of non-intersecting, intersecting and touching. So usually I refer this as non-intersecting. I refer this as intersecting, of course, intersecting at two points. And I refer this as touching because the line touches the circle here, the line intersects the circle here, the line does not intersect the circle here. So in this case, these two are a very special case which we take into consideration because when the line and the circle do not intersect, then we in mathematically, mathematically we assume that the line and the circle have no relation because they do not intersect. In case of this and this, we have many mathematical properties which we are going to study as geometrical understanding of the line and the circle intersecting and touching. To come with the intersecting circles here, if suppose I have the two points P and Q where the circle is intersecting, then this line segment PQ is called the chord or the secant of the circle. The chord or secant of the circle is what we call the line segment PQ. So for an intersecting circle, we have the chord and or the secant for a given circle. So here PQ is called chord or secant of the given circle. So the line segment PQ is called the chord or secant of the given circle. And as I identify, the chord or the secant is always less than the diameter because if I take the diameter, then the diameter is the maximum chord. So geometrically here, I understand that the diameter is the maximum chord. The length of the diameter is the highest chord out here. So if I take a note here, diameter of circle is the maximum chord of circle. The word maximum because the diameter is that length where we have the highest segment of the circle. And if it acts as the chord, then diameter of circle will be referred as the maximum chord. So coming to the chord and secant, let's switch on to the touching circles where if suppose I say the line touches the circle at say point P, then I call the point P as the point of contact and the line is said to be a tangent to the circle. It's very important that when a point, when a line touches the circle at single point, then the chord is zero because there is no sec secant or chord. Therefore, length of chord or secant is assumed as zero in case of a line touching the circle because this P and Q tend to one point is how we understand. So when P and Q tend to one point, then we get a tangent. So therefore, for touching circles, we say that the two circles touch when chord tends to zero, when chord or secant tends to zero, then we get a tangent out of a secant. So an intersecting concept reduces to touching concept if the chord 
reduces to zero or the secant reduces or tends to zero. So this two converge at the single point and here in this case if the chord tends to zero line L is called tangent. The line L is called tangent which is very important property out here and L is called point of contact. So in case of touching concept or the touching case the line L is called the tangent to the circle and point P is called the point of contact and how do we get the touching case when the intersecting circles have the secant or chord tending to zero then I get the touching case and in that case the line L is the tangent and L is and here point P is the point of contact I'm sorry it is not L but the point P which is the point of contact the point P which is identified here is said to be the point of contact so these are the three cases through which we understand a line cutting a circle, not, in, not intersecting a circle, cutting a circle at two points and touching the circle, of course, at one point. This is how we understand the three cases of a line and a circle in its geometrical concept. So let's exclusively study the topic of tangent of a circle as defined in the previous session, the case three of the line and its circle taken together. Now, what is a tangent? Let's recap with the already discussed topic out there. We see that a tangent is a line which touches the circle. So simple definition for a tangent is a line or a straight line which touches the circle is called a tangent. Now with this definition of a tangent, I have a fair question to all of you. How many tangents can we draw to a circle is the biggest question. So how many tangents, if suppose I take a circle with a suitable radius, then there are infinitely many points on the circumference of the circle. Therefore, at every point I can draw a tangent. Say for example, I would like to draw a tangent at this point P. Now how do I draw a tangent at this particular point P on the circumference of the circle? I straightly draw a line which touches the circle and this is the line which touches the circle therefore this line L is said to be the tangent this is said to be the tangent at P now I have some point Q then I do not call the tangent at P as at Q as this because the tangent refers to that point where the line touches the circle. Now call this as tangent at P because this line touches the circle at point P. If I wanted to find the tangent at Q, then I have to draw a line which touches the circle exactly at the point Q. Then I refer to that line which touches the line circle at point Q as tangent at Q. Say for example, I have this touching at Q. Then this is called the tangent at Q is how we understand the tangent connected with a circle. Now with this concept, I have an important note which says that there are infinitely many tangents which I can draw. So when I go with the first note, it says that there exist infinitely many tangents many tangents at infinitely many points on the circumference of the circle or on the circle because there are infinitely many points on the circumference of the circle there are infinitely many tangents you can draw each of the point referring to the respective tangent or the line drawn at that point to the circle, touching the circle at that particular point. Secondly,
This point is very important in its own geometrical understanding. So let's write the statement and just support on whether that is true or false. There are only two tangents which are parallel to each other. Now, as we have discussed in the first note, there are infinitely many tangents to the circle. Now, the fixed point is that there are only two tangents which are parallel to each other. That means there exist only two tangents which are exactly parallel to each other and to the same circle. So in this case of if I take a circle with suitable radius, then if I draw a tangent at this point, say A, then I have exactly on the opposite side of the diameter, exactly on the other end of the diameter, I have a tangent which are parallel. If this is t L1 and L2, then in this case, L1 is parallel to L2. Therefore, when I draw a tangent at one point of the circle, then the other tangent is parallel exactly on the other end of the diameter. Therefore, for AB as the diameter, if my tangent lies at point A here, then exactly on the other end or the other extreme of the diameter AB, I can draw a line, then only the two tangents are parallel. We cannot have three pairs of tangents parallel in the circle. This is a very important geometrical property which connects the parallel lines and the tangents for the circle connected through the geometrical property of the diameter of a circle. In this case, L1 is parallel to L2, which are the tangents at A and B. And not only that, interestingly, A and B are the extremes of the diameter. So take any diameter, draw the lines through the ends of the diameter touching the circle. Those two lines, which are the tangents, must be parallel. This is how we understand the second note in geometrical understanding.